In this episode of The Rugged Homestead, I'm gonna show you how to automate your chicken coop door opening. Ever since I built this chicken coop, I've wanted to have an automatic door, but I've been too lazy to do it. Most of the commercially available uh, systems I've seen that have been too expensive or too complicated with wires and limiting switches and stuff like that. It was just stuff I didn't want to get involved with. And it wasn't that much uh, different from the DIY uh, setups that I've seen online too. Besides not giving very good or clear instructions on exactly how to set up a DIY system, they were just uh, way too uh, involved. So I've been waiting to try to find a compact automatic system that was affordable. And with this uh, automatic door opener from runchicken.com, I think I got it right. So before I could get started on installing the door, I actually had to close down my opening a little bit, narrow it down. The opening that I had for the pop door was 12 inches by 12 inches. And you can see right here, this is the door that I had uh, been raising and lowering by hand. The chicken run uh, door is about nine and a half inches uh, wide. So I needed to narrow that down. So for one, I could actually mount it, mount the system onto the uh, coop. So I needed to narrow the opening so that I had a, something to mount the uh, door onto. Even the dog doesn't like the rain. He's hiding out underneath the coop. Chickens don't seem to mind it too much though. So this is the system of the run chicken uh, door. This is the, the motor, the, uh, where the batteries go. It's got the light sensor. Everything happens right in this compact housing right here. And then this is a hard, I guess like ABS plastic type of uh, hardware. It's the frame here with the mounting holes. And then this is the door that actually slides up and down. Now, I haven't opened this up or anything like that, but I'm assuming there's probably some kind of gear inside that moves up and down on this, uh, that allows the door to slide up and down on this track here. And it'll turn the uh, wheels inside and then they'll engage with these holes here and move it up and down at the appropriate time. We're not gonna worry about this at the moment because this tells you about the blue light. This light will blink blue uh, when it's getting ready to close. It uh, senses the change in daylight, so it'll warn you that it's getting ready to uh, close, which is a, uh, a nice feature. So I have to remove this from the frame to mount it. So I'm gonna do that now. So to take the uh, housing off, just gotta remove four screws. And that should be simple enough. Now I'm using a screwdriver rather than my uh, cordless driver because you want to be careful when mounting the uh, unit that you uh, don't compress and deform the frame because that uh, will make the door inoperable. So make sure you use a, uh, a screwdriver. Okay, so it comes with uh, two batteries, two alkaline batteries, and it's got the uh, little plastic piece that you move out. Oh, it's making all kinds of noise here. <laughs> oh yeah, and here is the uh, gear, like I said, that grabs right on here and moves the uh, unit up and down. Okay, good. These read, and it comes with the mounting screws too. So it looks like it's got everything that you need uh, to install it, and it looks pretty, uh, pretty darn simple. You just mount, put it where you want it to uh, mount, and I'm centering it in the uh, doorway, and then you're just going to screw right in here. So let's see how this all goes. Probably should have pre-drilled the holes into the wood. I'm also using particle board because 
it is protected, but, but it is going in really easy. So you would, you screw it down and then you just back it off uh, like a quarter turn. I think it tells you to leave like a millimeter of space. Okay. And really, that's all it is. So uh, I'll see if you can see. It's kind of tough to tell. But I've backed it out just a hair so it's not deflecting uh, this right here and preventing the door from sliding up and down. Okay, the screws are installed and I actually did drill pilot holes for these screws and it was a heck of a lot easier. So make sure you do that. Drill pilot holes for your screws before installing. That should almost be, <laughs> you shouldn't even have to say that. I should have known that from the beginning. But the door slides up and down readily and with the gear in place, it'll lock it in place when it's down so an animal can't come in and then lift it up so the next thing i have to do now is uh, mount the motor back onto the uh, frame here and that's it it's installed and ready to run there's a button under here under this t50 marking that when you press it It'll um, override all whatever settings you had and allow you to open or close the door. And that's it. And if I want to close it now, I mean, I don't think you get any better than that. That is just so simple, so compact. This is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. I understand there's also safety features involved. I'm gonna open it up again. And from what I understand, if there's a chicken in the doorway here, as the door's starting to come down, uh, it'll sense it when it hits resistance and it'll go back up or it'll stop or something like that. Let me see. Yeah, and it stops. There you go. So I'm going to leave it like this in the factory uh, default settings. And if the camera is moving, it's because I have the uh, tripod set up on the... Uh, food bucket of the chickens and uh, my buff Orpington is uh, feeding right now. So I'm going to leave this at the uh, factory settings and come out tonight. Hopefully it won't be a torrential downpour at that moment. And uh, I'm going to see how, like when it kicks in and whether I need to just leave it at the default settings or whether I need to program it uh, for something else. Uh, for what I understand, flashlights won't uh, affect this I'm not... yeah not even covering up the uh, sensor affects the uh, the thing it knows when to raise and lower the uh, the door so I've been using the run chicken door for a couple of weeks now just to get an idea as to how it actually operates and whether it lives up to the claims that it's made and so far it's really uh, run flawlessly uh, I'm not sure if you can see in the background, the blue light's flashing. That means it's sensed the uh, change in the light and within 20 minutes it opens up. So first light around here, uh, this morning anyway, is around 625. Um, sunrise is officially, um, I think 653 this morning. So it's right around that time now. Um, now, normally it's about 20 minutes after sunrise, it says that it, uh, uh, the coop door opens. Um, but because this is actually facing east, um, the light comes in here a little bit earlier than normal. So it senses that. And within the next minute or so, 
this should be opening up. It fluctuates, again, depending on what the light conditions are. So if it was overcast and raining, it'd be darker. It might open up a little bit later. But the factory settings for opening 20 minutes after sunrise, thereabouts, or 20 minutes after sunset, it says it's good for 90% of uh, the people that use the, uh, the coop door. And I'd have to agree, it actually, uh, it's really worked fine. So I've mentioned there is a button underneath here. There it is right there. And you can press that, you would hold it. And that light that's blinking blue right now will uh, turn green, a solid green. And then you would press the button again and it'll set the, uh, the time to open at that same time every day regardless. Also at night, you can set it to close later. Like I said, it closes at uh, 20 minutes after sunset thereabouts. And you can do that same kind of uh, uh, override, pressing that button and it'll, uh, and then confirming the, uh, the, the setting. And then rather than 20 minutes after uh, sunset, it'll stay open until 40 minutes. And then it also has a, uh, a, f a phone app that you can do to uh, do some uh, manual settings on it. So really, any minute now, uh, it should be opening. Uh, it, it's, in the past, it's tend to open about uh, uh, anywhere from three to five minutes uh, after the official uh, sunset or uh, sunrise time. So... Uh, we're probably pretty close to that right at this moment. And there we go. It's been about four minutes after the official sunrise time. Good morning, girls. Come on out. So as I said, I've been using this uh, coop door now for a couple of weeks. I had reached out to uh, Run Chicken uh, to see if they'd sponsor the video and uh, give them my honest review. Um, I have no problems criticizing a, uh, a product if there's, uh, if there's a problem with it. This thing has run flawlessly since I've had it. I will note that it also uh, claims that you can, <laughs> uh, that water doesn't affect this. And they should actually show uh, in their videos um, them submerging it in water and it remains operational. So uh, that's another uh, feature of it. I mean, it's protected here underneath my uh, coop uh, setup, so I don't have to uh, worry about that. But even moisture in the air, whatever, it's not going to affect the operation of that. Because it's got a lot of uh, customization features that you can do with setting the uh, opening and closing time, that's a real benefit. Runs on batteries. Uh, they say it lasts a year if you have a good quality battery, so you don't have to worry about that. But it also, also lets you know when the battery is getting low. So this is exactly uh, the kind of coupe door I was looking for. Didn't need the, uh, you know, those uh, really complicated setups, the wires, the switches, as I noted. It, it's just a nice, compact, sturdy uh, unit, and I highly recommend it. I'll leave a link to it below. They're affordable. At the time of this, they're around $160 or so, I think, which is cheaper than most of uh, the more complicated uh, uh, models on the uh, market. Uh, a little bit more expensive, I guess, than some, but I think this is uh, definitely worth the price. Okay, thanks for watching.